Hey guys, okay, so what we're going to do in this video is the twisted coil. So all we're going to need is some cantle. For this build we're going to be using 24 gauge cantle. Uh, we need needle nose pliers, some wire cutters, some scissors for your cotton, screwdriver for your atomizer, dripper, whatever you guys want to call them, some ceramic tweezers, Again, it's not really essential to have the ceramic tweezers if you don't have them. If you do, it means we can pinch the coils, scrape the coils, we'll get into that later. Um, it just means you can fire the mod and pinch at the same time. If you don't have them, you can use normal pliers, normal tweezers. Just remember, don't fire the mod when you're touching the coil with them. Down at the bottom there, it's some precision screwdrivers for the coil wrapping itself. This is a personal preference guys, I prefer to use the screwdrivers. Some people use the coil jigs, it's entirely up to yourself, doesn't make a difference. And up at the top we have some cotton. Also what we're going to be needing for this twisted build, power drill. There is ways and means of doing the twisted coils without a power drill, it just makes life a bit easier. So. Let's get stuck. Okay guys, so let's get into the coil making itself. All I've done here is cut off a piece of cantle, doubled it up, and with the two ends that are separated, the opposite end of that, just grab it with the needle nose pliers and straighten that out as best as you can. It doesn't have to be poker straight, just to bring those two wires a bit closer together. At the other end, all we're doing is with the needle nose pliers holding the two of them together and give it a 90 degree bend. This just helps it sit in the drill a lot better. So with the two ends that we've just made the 90 degree bend in, all we're going to do is put that into the teeth of the chuck in the drill. So what I personally do is separate the two ends into their own sort of set of teeth just gives you a bit more grip and make sure you tighten it down fully. When this is spinning at full speed, the last thing you want is for it to come loose. It's not pleasant. So, we take our needle nose pliers into the loop at the end and hold on to the drill and just sort of maneuver the pliers to try and get as much slack out of the wire as possible. Once we've got that, it's time to spin it up and basically what we're looking for is as tight as a twist as possible. Basically you want to stop just before the wire actually snaps. If it does snap, not to worry, you know you've went the right amount of time. Sometimes it can kink up in the middle. If that happens, it's time to start again. But we'll see how we go with this one. So I've kind of stopped about maybe a quarter of the way through there. You'll see it looking, not too sure whether you can see it on the camera there. I'll get a close up of that. It kind of looks like, kind of like a girl's braid in her hair, you know, like a plait. Um, if it goes that way, it's not twisted enough to be a twisted coil. Technically it is still twisted, but we'll want to go a lot further. You can still use this, it's just not going to be as good as it can be. So we'll keep going and we'll have a look at the end result. Okay guys, that's as far as we need to go. We'll get a close up of that on the screen now. As I said guys, this is kind of the shape and the style that we're going for. 
it is quite hard to keep it in focus here up close uh, but you can see that they are very very close together and this is exactly the point where you need to stop now we'll give it a clip at the end and that's us ready to coil it up in the RDA see what it reads at on the ohmmeter and we'll work from there okay so we're at the point now where we're going to actually start to wrap the coil what we're going for here guys is five wraps of the 24 gauge twisted cantle. This should come in at about 0.3 ohms, around about that area, which is decent enough. You'll get plenty of clouds and decent flavor with it being twisted. Um, as I said at the start of the video, I do prefer to use the precision screwdrivers. Personal preference, um, basically with the thicker gauge wires, if you're doing maybe triple twisted wires, quadruple twisted, going into the Clapton style coils or the staggered Claptons, etc. etc. It can be quite difficult to use the coil jigs. So we'll continue to use the precision screwdriver here. All I'm doing is taking the cantle, setting it against the lip of the screwdriver there. Hopefully you can see that okay. Holding it with my thumb so it doesn't move and we're wanting the wraps as close together as possible. Don't worry if there's spaces in between them guys, we can tidy them up afterwards. So we're going for five wraps, that's three, four, and five. So with this being the twisted wire, it can be quite springy, uh, so you really need to put a bit of pressure onto it to keep it in place. So what I like to do is take the needle nose pliers and hold one end of the cantle with the other end with the needle nose pliers and just give it a good tug to get most of that spring out. Uh, don't, remember, don't forget to push it forward as it will spring back on you. Then we take our wire clippers and what we're going to do is we're going to leave one leg longer than the other. Not by much, but it just makes it easier to place the coil onto the RDA. Uh, so I would say maybe right about there, that should be enough for us. And we'll clip. So this is what we've got. I'll get a close up of this guys afterwards. So this is the coil just after it's wrapped. As you can see, there is a few spaces just in between the coils themselves. But we'll see next how to tighten those up and bring them closer together just so they look a bit more uniform and will also help them heat up a bit more evenly. Um, so as you can see there are spaces in between. Again that is perfectly fine if you want the space because they do take a bit longer to heat up. I hope I'm right on that. I like mine to be practically touching together. Uh, I just find it it's a bit more uniform nicer to look at and it heats up a bit quicker. So next step is to mount it into the RDA. So as you can see I have went ahead and mounted the coil into the RDA. Basically guys all it is is when you're holding the coil with the screwdriver or your coil jig you're wanting the, the middle post here is the positive post. Each one on either side here are the negative posts. So you want one leg going to one of the negative posts and the other leg going to the positive. Once you get that in, you give it a sort of bit of a straighten and tighten down the connections and remove the screwdriver. And we'll turn this on just to see what reading we've got. So as you can see, we've got 0.31 ohms, which is right about what we were looking. When we take this off the ohm reader and we place it on your mod or your mech mod or whatever you're using to fire the RDA, we'll fire it up, which I'll show you in the next set here, and we'll pinch the coils to make sure we get it glowing from the inside out and evenly with no hot spots. So, as you can see here, it's now mounted on the mech or mechanical mod. 
One thing I will say guys, if you're using the mechanical mod to place your coils, it, it is a bit more comfortable to hold along with your mods such as this one here. Um, what I would suggest definitely is to remove the batteries or at least turn them off. With the mechanical mods obviously there's no switches on it or the fire switch but even though we can lock those down, unscrew it, take the battery out just to be in the safe side. Just a side note guys, if you are deciding to use mech mods or mechanical mods or box mods that are unregulated, please make sure that you fully understand Ohm's law. It's not a suggestion guys, it is for safety. Make sure your batteries are reputable. Such, I mean, at the minute I am using a Sony VTC3. Uh, not too sure if you can see the writing on that. VTC3s, VTC4s, 5s. The only batteries I would use personally in mechanical mods. You can go for the LG batteries. Um, I'm not too sure of the exact models, uh, but I can certainly find that out if need be for you. So, we're everything set up now, so what we're going to do is we're going to fire the mod just to get the coil lightened up to see how much work we need to do to make sure it's glowing evenly. So, let's have a look. So, just give it a few pulses guys, you'll see it's smoking and we're looking for it to light up. So, as you can see, it's starting to light up there and what we do is we give it a pinch. As I said at the start of the video guys, if you aren't using the ceramic tweezers, which I have here, don't fire the mod and touch the coil at the same time. It will short the battery and could possibly cause damage to the mech, to the mod, the RDA, or more importantly, yourself. So what we're looking for is a nice even glow from the inside out. So we give it a pinch. We're nearly there. So, as I mentioned again at the start of the video about scraping the coils, all I'm doing here is pinching the tweezers together and basically strumming it, kind of like a guitar. And all it does is it sort of separates the coils ever so slightly. You probably wouldn't even see it with your eye unless it was up close. And it does just help get rid of those hot spots. And we'll see how we're going now and it's glowing nice and even. All that's left to do now is to wick the coil with some cotton, juice it up and we'll take it up top and we'll see how it feels. When it comes to wicking the coil guys, what we're looking for is around two to two and a half inches of cotton, which is what I like to work with. This cotton is basically a generic brand and it just comes in one long sheet of cotton that's been rolled up and in a tub. So all I'm doing at the minute is just gently rolling it together to bring kind of like a cigar shape as such. At the very end of one side of the cotton, give it a pinch and roll it quite tight. Uh, it just makes it easier to fit through the coil. So hopefully you can see this guys. All I'm doing is through the middle of the coil and a gentle tug on the other side. If you find that it's too much of an effort to pull that cotton through, then you've too much cotton for the coil itself. What we're looking for is a snug fit with a slight bit of movement. If you can't move it at all, again, too much cotton, take it out, trim it down ever so slightly and try again. With this particular RDA guys, because I have worked it before, what we're looking for is around about, just it that much, really need to get new scissors, and same on the other side. Believe it or not guys, that's all the cotton that we need. With your tweezers or your precision screwdrivers or whatever you have, 
all we're doing is just fluffing up the ends. This just helps with the wicking process of wicking the juice into the coil. And what I like to do is at the ends just lift it ever so slightly and fold it underneath and down into the juice well. Same on the other side, just lift it up and tuck it underneath. As you can see there. So what you don't want to do guys is before you juice up the cotton, you don't want to fire the mod as it doesn't take a genius to work out, it will burn the cotton, can't catch on fire, and nobody wants that. So what we're going to do now guys, we're going to juice this up and we'll see how it fits. So that's us wicked up guys. What we're going to use today is some Salted Indulgence by Nom Noms. This stuff is fantastic. It's a company based here locally in Northern Ireland and to be honest guys I can't fault any of their flavours. If you can check them out and tell me what you think. All we're doing here with the RDA and the cotton is not overly covering the cotton, just painting it a bit over the top of the coil and the other side of the cotton. Now, don't be surprised guys, the first time that you do this, you might sort of get a dry, burnt taste. That's perfectly normal, it just means you need a bit more juice on the cotton itself. Just tidy up the cotton slightly there on that side, and just to make sure it is sitting in the juice well, and not over the side, or we're going to get leaks. So, before I put it on, what I like to do is give it a couple of test fires. So as you can see, it's worked well. And we'll put another drop of juice on. Okay, and the top cap. Always line the air holes up with the coil itself, just to allow for a maximum air flow. And let's see how it fits. As you can see guys, plenty of clouds, flavour is intense, it always will be with the twisted coils itself, in my opinion. Um, so that wraps up the video for today. If you like what you see, hit the like button, feel free to subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions. If you do have any questions guys, I will try my best to answer them. If I can't answer them straight away, I will find out and I will get back to you. So, until next time guys, keep it cloudy. <laughs>